I've never been, never been one to like want to, want to stand out. I used to love standing out, going out, dancing, a big shot. putting my outfits on. I, I like know. pushing other people forward now. I want them to stand out. Hey, I'm Reese Ripper. I'm a Yordi Auto Man from Echuca, Miami. I work as a creative director and stylist in the Australian fashion industry. My name's Nathan Maguire. I'm a Wajak Noongar man from Boroloo, Perth. I work as a model, a designer, and a cultural consultant. I started in the industry in the mid 2000s, heavily influenced by like music videos and film, because I come from that time where, in the 90s, we were, we were so obsessed with like TV and MTV and Rage and TV hits. It was just like, oh god, this is so good. I want to be part of this world, and just entered the industry as some big shot that had done nothing and was like, I'm going to start working in fashion and launch a magazine. And I just did it. So you started with your magazine and modelling agency? I actually started casting my friends first who were within my circle. They just happened to be good looking people. And then I noticed that brands such as Levi's would hit me up saying, hey, we want to use your, your guys. And it just started growing. But with my culture, it didn't actually come into my work until later. Well, I started seeing changes with culture, but it was actually stemmed from you. When I started modelling, there was literally probably a handful of models that were First Nations people. The conversation wasn't even happening in Australia. Any sort of editorial or interest I had about my culture within fashion came from New Zealand magazines, publications in the UK or in Europe or uh, even in America, they were more interested before Australia was interested. When you came through as a model, we, we'd seen it with Sam Harris, but we hadn't seen many boys come through and just being told that you can't do it, you're like, no, I can. And the importance of being a black fella in fashion going, well, I am gonna do it and I'm gonna find my market here. We saw your career where you started, there was no ego, so you were willing to do any jobs to learn the craft and then be seen. Not realising that black fellas all over the country were seeing you in Target in the middle of the outback or all these other shops and going, oh my God, I'm seeing myself in the window. Yeah. You were doing everything from here to, to here and connecting with everyone. When I started, I was told they didn't know what to do with an Aboriginal boy. And so, you know, that's something that has driven has been in the back of my mind as a driving force for my career, but also how I think I talk about the space and I talk about the work I do, like the level of work that I want to do as well, because when you're told you don't, they don't know what to do with you, you actually have to create that blueprint of what um, a success story looks like in Australia. You're literally the reason why I came back into fashion. You end up being my model muse for so long. Yeah. And even for me, I, I'm constantly inspired by you because I need that for myself to keep driving me. I need other black fellas going, you know what, no, we need to see us here. It's the high, there's so much highs and so many lows from a cultural perspective. Yeah. Like that's been really challenging, but I think my best work has come from that. With me, like I'm definitely inspired by my own people, my own, family and with all my work you see that I'm 100% inspired by this country. I'm forever shooting on country, <laughs> location. anyone's yeah. country, but I'm shooting on country. That is just my vibe. Most of my work you won't even see in a studio because I have to shoot somewhere mm. where I can be around animals and be around the nature and just feel, feel the country. My way that I'm connected to culture is obviously how I was raised. So there's the person who's Nathan, and then there's the model who's Nathan. And where those two kind of meet, it is political in a sense, because, because of how, that, how the space hasn't really been open, I am inspired by the, I guess, the work that people before me have done, like in the, in the fight for, for rights, or the right to be seen and have work heard or our story told. I think that's where like, like the root of my creative output comes from with culture is that that's what 
that's what drives it. I'm gonna like hopefully look back in time and be like, oh well, that was that was fantastic. That that's what makes fashion exciting for me is that you know there is a bigger picture, and I get to be part of that. But I also get to um, help write that narrative. Yeah, accidentally stand out is probably what happened to me. Yeah, <laughs> so funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> the last person it should happen to it happened to you. Yeah, I know. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of weird, but it's good. It is good. You're humble. I'm a humble boy. <laughs> <laughs>